the sharp tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And today, I don't think he need any introduction because everybody know him, man. You know, real LA native. Really mashing for his ration. We got Glasses Malone in the building today. My God. How you feeling, man? I'm cooling, man. I'm cooling. Everything cool? How was your morning? How'd your morning start? Man, uh, <laughs> should have started with this text. Yeah. I didn't even know we rescheduled to today. Yeah. Um, the text came in the morning. Oh, uh, Mike back too far. Yeah, yeah. It's my nigga Mike. Yeah. So uh, what about that? A little bit better? That's better? Okay, don't cut that out. That's player. That's player. <laughs> nah, okay, so it started because uh, we, I didn't know that, you know, they had rescheduled for today. Nobody yeah. told me. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was just, it was dope. I got up. I didn't even go. I was supposed to get a haircut and I didn't go. I was like, I need to be on time. Yeah, That's man. been my whole thing about uh, getting older is being on time. Yeah. I don't really want to play with nobody else's time. Right. I don't know what's why that is, but yeah. it, didn't, it didn't got way more serious. So this whole promo run for uh, Cancel These Nuts and visiting people and politicking with people on, the, on these uh, cameras, it's just been about being on time. So I just wanted to be on time. I ended up coming here about 12 minutes early. Yeah. So that was good. Well- I always say, you know, time is everything. Like, you can't get that back. I don't care if it's 10 minutes. I don't care if it's a second, 60 seconds. You can't never get it back. So, you know, I've always, as I've gotten older, I felt like, you know, spend your time wisely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Be so careful. Maybe that's you spend what it's it. about. Yeah. yeah, you're just trying you to spend older, your time yeah. wisely. You know, yeah, yeah. And not waste nobody else's. True. You know what I mean? I don't want to have y'all. Sitting around waiting for me, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, nah, I'll be here. So yeah. that's just where you at. Tell me a little bit about the cancel, cancel these nuts. Tell me a little bit about that. I heard you speak about that. Nah, just the attitude. You know, yeah. like like the West haven't the West used to to lead the country in attitude. Mm. It was the wildest. You know what I mean? You, wild you West. Yeah, yeah, the wild, wild West. You couldn't <laughs> the police couldn't grab the wrist too hard without us, you know what I mean, going yeah. off and tearing some shit up. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the over the last maybe 20 years, we didn't adopted everybody else's kind of subtleness. Mm. You know what I mean? A lot of things have kind of calmed down and it's like, nah, we still got to lead the way when it comes to this. I was about to say, cause I've been in LA living here for probably like the last three and a half months. They trip. No, no, no. Not they trip. The streets is consistent. <laughs> but streets the, is consistent. Yeah, but the representation to the rest of the world yeah. of our street urban culture. Yeah. I feel like we haven't did a great job of people realizing that we still don't. Yeah. So Council These Nuts is just that attitude reintroduced again to people. And, you know, this is a whole generation of kids that never got to see Dr. Dre like I did when I was 10, 11, 12, and, yeah. and Snoop Dogg. And they didn't see that. You know yeah. I mean, some of these kids was just born. You know, 20 years ago, we talking about 2010. Right. 2003, 2005, you know what I mean? Yeah. They didn't see Dr. Dre and Snoop. They didn't really get to see the West in his heyday. Right. And that's kind of, to me, why you hear a lot of these artists. I heard Greedy, uh, shout out to 3 Greedo, but I heard him say, like, who was Battle Cat? Like, because Battle Cat, he's, he, this a little, he's a little baby when Battle Cat doing his thing. And they right. didn't really get to see how the West put on for the world. Right. So it's about reintroducing that energy, you know what I mean? So yeah. people can see how the West get down. How real. long how long have you been doing music? Professionally, 15 years now. This is my 15th season. You know, if I'm not mistaken, the first time I heard you, I want to say was back in like maybe 08, 09. I think you had did a joint on a video game called Midnight Club LA. Yeah, shout out to Static and Selected. Static Selected, and uh, y'all had did, um, it was actually the intro to the South Central expansion. That's true. And it's crazy because Static was so far, so far ahead on that wave. I didn't even really realize who Static Selected was at that time. Like yeah. I was still just very much a crip at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I you know what I mean? Yeah, like I didn't really... Yeah. All I knew was street rappers and guys who had other songs that I liked. Mm. So I didn't really realize hip hop behind the scenes with those type of producers and that type of mind. It's funny because I just hit that about a month ago. It was like, what up, Static? He's like, what up, G? And it was just, I didn't really get a chance to get his number, but I was calling him to thank him because I didn't understand it back then, what he was doing for me. And um, You just recently talked to him? Yeah, but I didn't really get a chance to even go further because I was doing three things, but... For sure, after I hop off this podcast, I'm going to remind myself to hit him back again and send him my number so I could thank him. Yeah. Because he introduced me into a lot of folds and waves and different people that like street urban culture from the outside that ain't a part of it. 
that that live in the suburbs, that live in overseas, and you know those type of guys have interest to those audiences, and that's important. Not everybody. You know, especially back then, like, you know, just up and coming, just moving. If you ain't got a big ass, super huge ass following was getting on video games. That's yeah. hard to do, bro, to yeah. get your music on a video game. If you ain't got like this super ass motion, you know what I'm saying, to where you known worldwide and they had no choice but to throw your joint on there. For them to have y'all feature yeah. that expansion or whatever they had put on the game at the time, that was crazy, man. Yeah, I, but I, I've been blessed this whole time. Like, yeah. um, like my story in LA is unique. You know, I grew up in Compton and watched my whole life. My mom and dad broke up when I was younger. My mom kept her house in Compton since she went to the feds the first time. My dad lived and watched my whole life. So I've been back and forth able to get this great experience of culture all the whole time. Yeah. And so the streets, don't get me wrong, the streets don't love nobody, but they always been okay to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, the coldest names. You know what I mean? The greatest names in the history of gangbanging, like those and those are people to me that I recognize and call friends and people that I admire. You know what I mean? I fuck with. Like I love all of them. I feel like they're, you know, the ones that represent well, I like that. So it's always been great. And the same for hip hop. When I got into the business, I had songs on Mad No Seven. I had a song right now produced by Scott Storch. Mm -hmm. Um, I had I've been on GTA games, a song with me and Problem. I had two yeah. songs on that. I had songs with Static Selected. You have been, movies. yeah, because I was like, Static Selected, that one was, people don't even know that one was years, years ago. ago. That's not even, game. yeah. Not even knowing, like I said, like not even knowing, because I never played the game. Right. By the time 2003 happened, I was off video games, two, one. I, when I'm hustling, I'm off video games completely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like them times now, I'm sitting in the spot selling that Sherm. I'm not playing a <laughs> game. I'm counting this coin, you know, trying to get yeah, it right. So. Yeah. To watch this whole kind of development of video games now, where it's like, you know, people socially interact with their friends. Yeah. You know, by the time I stopped playing video games, it wasn't no connected to no mother. Body. You really just played at the house. You just played at the house. Kid, you know what I mean? Fights used to happen. That's nigga, it. Yeah. At the house over that shit. Real squabble. Ain't no real squabble. Screaming over no headphones. So I've seen them. <laughs> so, so to watch how the, how the development of all that shit came has been dope, and that was my point. I think the streets been good to me. You know, they've been okay to me. You know what I mean? Been happening to me like everybody else, but I see the positive side. Same with the music business. It's been really good to me, dog. I ain't really had no complaints. It was me not putting the most effort, so yeah. I ain't really got no complaints. So do you feel like you having certain characteristics was what was able to open the door from, because let's be real, like like you said, to be gang banging, they, look, they get stuck in it, yeah. like, and they don't, they don't leave it, you know, even if they have a talent or something that could push them forward, you know, they'll really kind of just stay in their box because that's what they're comfortable with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to see you, you pretty much said you stepped outside the box. Like you were able to go with different people. That's probably what elevated your career. I think it's luck. So I think it's two things, right? I think it's luck and being sober. Like I ain't never drank nothing. I ain't never smoked nothing a day in my life. So I'm <laughs> always aware. So certain people that another person might pass, I shook that hand. Like when you see when I'm walking in, the man that's right there, I remember them last two people. I'm going to shake the man's hand. The man that's over here, cub behind engineering, I'm going to shake his hand. You got back up to go shake his hand. Yeah. But one day going to be running it. Yeah. That's just the hustler mentality. Yeah, you I'm treat not. everybody like you got some sense. Damn. <laughs> Sad. You treat everybody, like you, treat every, you treat the doorman. A lot of the doormen that I was shaking hands at when I first got in the business in 2007, them niggas is running labels. And them niggas remembered I shook them hands like, Everybody deserves some respect, even if you think their job ain't that important. And that's always worked right. out for me. But I think it's a lot of luck because a lot of could happen, especially the way they be talking about these, hear these stories about some of these execs. And you know, I look at how a like Mace and Puff changed his life and this talking crazy about this. I'm looking at myself like, I don't give a what Cuz did to you. He changed your life and made you a millionaire. If one day you can get up on a stage, Cuz, and be bashing this bro, I really don't understand what type of man you is. I wouldn't want to with you because you're giving me a preview already of what's to come if I go with you. You can do that like that. Puff, You've known that for years Femi, and he changed your life. I don't give a what's what going on. Did. Yeah, like, I don't give a that for a second and I feel, I feel you on that, bro. And so where I'm at with it is like really keeping that. I, I was having this conversation with Charlamagne on the Breakfast Club and I was telling him he was like, man, glasses, do you get tired of being street? And I'm like, being street is about being a man. How you handle yourself as being street. a man. 
even even once I walk in this room, shaking Cuz's hand is the streetest thing I could do. Treating everybody. I, I walk in the PJs, bro. We'll walk to the pink store, cuz. Yeah, I know this I know I know these niggas. These is but guess guess what? These little one day gonna be this. And that's how you treat people. So yeah. I think I've always walked it that way. You know what I mean? I don't know who is who. You know what I mean? It's easy to walk in this motherfucker shake Adam hand. Yeah. Somebody might walk right past cuz. You know, that's why even like when I be here around everybody, I always treat everybody equal and fair. Like I with him. If there's an interview I can bring him in on, that might not, they'd be like, damn, it, it might not even make sense for them. Because they're like, damn, Sharp, you already doing your thing. Why you going to drag me? Why you going to bring me in? It's because, bro, if we around, I'm here to help. Yeah. We got to help one another, you know? And like you said, I don't know who going to come up on or get into what tomorrow. You might remember how I with him and was cool with him out of everybody. Come pick me out, want to go, you know what I'm saying, make a couple million with me or give me a business venture because it was so cool with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and minus, Relationships, everything, bro. Yeah, and minus, like I said, but that's the, the streets teach you diplomacy, especially if you hustling. Yeah. If you hustling, the streets going to treat gonna teach you diplomacy. Like, because you just can't get rich with your own homeboys. No. You, as a crip, you can't just sell drugs to crips. You ain't going to make no money. You ain't make no so, money. So, I need to sell hamburgers to vegans, too. You know what yeah, I mean? Everybody yeah. got to, you got to go politic in everybody community. And yeah. I just brought that same mentality. I'm, I'm all the greatness that being street can bring you. And it's my job to keep, you know, blazing that trail like an iced tea. You know what I mean? Like the before me to me that were hella street and then they changed their lives through this music business, through hip hop. Yeah. That's my job. What do you, do you feel like, uh, maybe you can help me. You know what I'm saying, dissect it. I mean, do you feel like gangster rap and street rap's kind of different? Because, you know, you hear gangster rap say, you know, you might pop it and do something. But then, you know, back in the day, you had like Ice Cube that was putting out music. I feel like he put out music for the streets. It was a different type of lingo. Mm. You feel like, you know what I'm saying, do you feel like there's it's a difference? Because some people probably say, well, Sharp, there's no difference. You know, street gangster, it's all the same. But I feel like there's a, there's a separation in it a little bit. Good and bad. <laughs> Good and bad. Ice Cube is really, really great. Yeah. You know what I mean? The other could be shallow. You know what I mean? It could just yeah. be the whole conflict between men. Right. And like I hear a lot of people judging a lot of the drill rap. Oh, you know, it's just murder rap or this is just uh, serial killer. It's not, man. These little kids is talking about being at war with each other. These communities are at war with each other because somebody wants their demise and people don't respect the war, but they respect these crackers beefing with each other. They mm. respect Russia and Ukraine killing each other. They respect, you know, they'll be, they'll understand why, you know, uh, uh, Israel and 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 uh, Hamas is beefing. You understand that? You ain't calling them serial killers, and some people will. But I'm saying it's 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 hard to put respect on why somebody's having a disagreement. It's harder to go in and really care about why these people are fighting and decide that you want to solve it. Mm. That's harder, and that's kind of why I find myself in. I'm not the kind of person that's judging why the Chicago brothers the is beefing. I'm trying to figure out what's the solution. How do we get these stop? Why do you have so much time? Why are they at work? Maybe these need opportunity. So I think when you hear Ice Cube, you hear that at the pinnacle of gangster rap, a street rap. You know what I mean? You hear somebody who's hell of aware of everything in this community, who's running a liquor store, you know what I'm saying? Right. Who's oppressing what person in which corner? Who's taking what to what state to make money? You hear somebody that aware versus you hear, you know, a youngster, like a, a young nigga coming out of different places talking about, it's the shallow. Not to mention these niggas high as a You know, they own all kind of dope. The drugs are different these days than what niggas is using. You Feel know what I'm saying? Next level. Yeah. It ain't a nigga just going and hitting a wet daddy yeah, real quick. It Crazy, the street, no. nah. hey, we was talking about it earlier. You got niggas out here smoking full blown bath salts yeah. and medication. Really taking medication, like psychotropic medication. So, I, I I think what you hear with a lot of those guys, and and I respect that as gangster rap or street rap is the same too. I just think it's not as great because the mind that mind is not as aware. It's hmm. not as aware, even though they was the same age when Cube started. They all Cube is a sober nigga. Cube is really. You know, listen to his his content. That nigga was so he was putting me up on. Shit. That and was I, your that era, was is what you saying? That was your air. I'm nine to ten when he comes out. You know what I mean? Right. By himself. Yes, yeah, so your mind is fresh. It's young. He's it's telling me about the certain people sponge. running the liquor stores. Yeah. You know who's oppressing what? Who's yeah. holding the finances and opportunity back from my specific community? Right. So he was hella aware for his age, 
And now we're looking at these kids who kind of dealing with, they, they medicating to deal with the same problems. So they just giving you the shallow look of it. Man, this, this person over here in this community trying to kill me and I do whatever I got to do to stay alive and I'm proud of staying alive. Yeah. So it's just a little bit more shallow. It's just not as good because it's not as aware. It's not as conscious of what Q was talking about. But I think of it as the same. Too. These kids, I feel like, man, they treating uh, wars with each other like cap gun fights. Yeah, like it ain't. But but that's what happens when you take those drugs to suppress your conscience. You know what I mean? When you suppress mm -hmm. your conscience, you suppress your, your, your everything internally, your soul. You know, a lot of that, especially those, uh, the, uh, what's the shit? Uh, heroin is, um, all that, all the medicines and shit. That's like yeah. heroin, the same thing. Oxycontin. Yeah, and what all is that, that called? That's a uh, opiate. Yeah. yeah, opiate. Yeah. When you suppress your soul, good looking out, big dog. Opiate. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you taking all that. That shit suppress your soul and your conscience. You, you not as aware of all your actions. That's why these. Man, I used to go to jail in the two thousands. Man, I was fucking up all the time, and I'd be watching niggas be cold niggas crying. Cause like now ain't no drugs in here. These niggas is aware that they life now is in trouble. But the whole time they was animals on the streets. Some of the coldest niggas I knew that was on the streets go to jail and start crying. Because now ain't no dope in here to help deal with and all reality the setting in. And now you aware. You like, hold up, I did what? Y'all trying to give me how much time? You know what I mean? And them that's them offensive lineman numbers. Nigga, that shit just look different. How I don't understand, and maybe you can help me because you from that era. Like, it was never, I mean, I get we live in the era of, you know, the drug user versus when we were coming up, it was drug a drug dealer. dealer. Yeah. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? So it was drug dealing music being talked. It just seems like the music today is very junkie-ish. <laughs> Right. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to like put it into yeah, a yeah, perspective yeah. of like, you know what I'm saying, it's very yeah. junkyish. Like, it was never cool. Like, if a nigga did drugs back in the day, he tried to keep his shit on the DL because yeah. he didn't want nobody to roast him or cap him sure, or what, sure. treat him differently. Because yeah. you would be treated a little bit differently. Now it's like, nigga, as a nigga that don't do it, you outnumbered. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up, like man, what you mean, bro? Like you don't pop these, you don't pop nigga. these. Oh, nigga, you Trippy, going to nigga, the party? I'd have been to parties with niggas. As soon as somebody starts pulling out any, like I could be at a party drinking, smoking. I'm cool with all that, right? That shit I sure. grew up on. Yeah. As soon as a nigga start pulling out that pills, kill that pulling out coke, punch, start gold. pulling out any type of shit, it's time for me to go, bro. Party's you know over part. to me. Why is because you know why the dynamic and the vibe is about to change. Sure. I'm not about to be on none of that. So their party's about to go to a whole nother <laughs> level. You know what I'm saying? So right. I just dismiss myself, bro. It's, it's crazy to see. What's weird about the music that you're talking about is, yeah. so it's not as simple as being a junkie, right? What it is is, so even back in the day, niggas was flossing, achieving money, wealth, success, right? So they was like, okay, I'm hustling, so I got this much money. What I think I hear, because, I'm again, I'm sober all the time, is I hear people flossing how much they're spending on drugs. Like, this is how well I am balling now. Look, I can blow off this money. I could pour five ounces of lean inside of a 20-ounce soda. This is how much money I have. I can recklessly misuse this amount of lean, you feel me, in one serving. So it's the same flossing, but achieving it is really unique how it changed from then to now. But, I mean, as long as niggas flossing, I guess that's how they feel. $1,000 for five ounces. Hey, like, it's nothing. I remember, nigga, you get that <laughs> shit from the car, you get a script, nigga, $16 yeah, nah. for a whole 16 And I'm mad that none of us is getting the money. <sighs> I prefer it at least when, okay, if the community is going to be on drugs, at least some black people is making the money. Now the community is on drugs and nobody making no goddamn money because we don't even got this shit. Mm -mm. We don't got this shit. Pharmaceuticals we, do. Yeah, they all the all the white folks get. They cut us out again. Cut us out again. Man, I met a dude one time, right? And I don't mean to get off the subject of, but I met a dude one time. He was sitting at the bar and like he was doing it. Man, this dude had a big ass bag of coke on him. He was rich, bro. Rich as hell. And he was like, uh, you know, I got a, he was like, man, I got a person that just, man, I got doctors make this shit for me. He's like, I got some scientists to make all this shit for me. I'll just pay them. <laughs> he got the you real say? Yeah, he just go and get cook. it made. Yeah, go get it made himself. You know, motherfuckers is that invested into where putting their money into a full-blown motherfucking scientist to have their drugs produced for them. 
It's that serious. It's that, it's that serious, bro. But you know what? To be honest, I ain't even mad at him because everybody yeah. cutting shit with Fat sure. all these days. Exactly. That nigga, he don't want his heart to blow up. Yeah. He's yeah. trying to fuck some bitches and do some blow. Exactly. And, and it's, again, man, I used to think about the same thing when niggas used to go on burns, you know, make insurance. <laughs> yeah. Like a PCP. It's like, this is a real chemical experiment. You feel like that affected the music game a little bit? Sure. Nah. Because niggas was smoking wet daddies. Fuck yeah. Sherman Hemmingsley's. Nah, I just think of- For sure. I remember. That <laughs> I shit smelled I, different, dog. I, I think I think, I think, think poor people can consistently have been medicated to deal with the circumstances of being deprived of opportunities yeah. and all the other bullshit they got to deal with. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think that hasn't changed because niggas was on drugs back then, but again, you could floss your wealth in other ways. Now it's about, like I said, it's about saying how much you spending on this. Like I could afford to waste $1,000 on a 20 ounce soda. That's how much money I make. And it's just a weird thing, but you know, if nobody's saying it, it look crazy. But that's also why we be on niggas. That's what Council These Nuts, that whole attitude is about. Like, man, we not fucking with you junky ass niggas. You niggas ain't tough to us. I don't, all that high power shit niggas talking, you on dope bitch, you don't even want to deal with this. Do it sober. You want to yeah. show me something, nigga? Come get cracking sober, nigga. You yeah. getting high and shit, thinking you tough, I ain't riding. You know, uh, shout out to Brick Baby, because Brick Baby was saying earlier, he was like, I can't ever respect a nigga that slides high. Yeah. He said, nigga, yeah. slide sober. He said, nigga, smoke some weed. Yeah. He was like, but to be like high, bro, he's like, if you got to do that type of shit, you, you kind of use a, you know what I'm saying? If you got to get faded to go make a move or slide on somebody, it ain't really in you. I'm going to tell, I would tell Brick, like niggas told me, what's mm -hmm. wrong with you? What's wrong with us? Mm. How are we doing this via so? How are we participate? So we probably yeah. the problems. If you ain't how are you doing this like how I was, it's just uh you probably the problem. But um it's it it is a different thing, you know what I mean? And and it's something to listen to with niggas. But I, I look at it as the same. I look at all the gangster rap as the same. I just think it's Cube is the pinnacle of what it can sound like because he's so aware of the community, you know, that we call the hood. He's yeah. aware. So but then you have those guys who are more, the conversation is a little bit more shallow. It's just a conflict amongst men. You know, there's no depth to it. It's, it's provided no depth. But they also kind of, you know, high, drunk, dealing with it, yeah. young. 18-year-old uh, today ain't 18 back when Cube was 18. Yeah. It ain't even 18 when I was 18. And no, it's different, bro. Like I said, when we was younger, you know, nigga that was like 16, you would have thought he was 20 by the way he carried himself. If you look at Marvin Gaye and them era, them niggas look 36 when them niggas was 18. 18 niggas, years old. Yeah, them niggas look 37 or something. Taco meat hanging out. Nigga had a job for four <laughs> years, four years of pension. So I think the population is getting younger and, and as a society, we putting less pressure on, you know, teenagers to grow up. But, mm. you know, some people think it's cool, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's great at all. I think it's a mistake. I think we have to start putting responsibility on teenagers really early because that's that developmental time when they start screwing up. Yeah. They start, you know, if you if you have a kid, I watch people with kids and shit, they kids get 14, 15, think they know everything. First time you think you know more than me, you need a job. Hey, I think it stopped. And I know people frown upon it, but I think it stopped when you was when you are not allowed to whoop your kid's ass no more. <laughs> like, for real. Like, I, when I got my ass whooped, bruh, from yeah. certain things, I never did that shit yeah. again. And yeah. if I did it again, I knew I couldn't blame nobody but myself. Yeah, and you had it coming. And yeah, I had it coming. It's too many excuses made. I don't think it's, it, it doesn't make them for a better person these days, bro. Like, discipline is always needed. You could throw a motherfucker in a jail cell and they just pro, they just do their years, they come out with no type of rehabilitation, no type of skills, no type of nothing. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, it is bullshit, bro. But that goes into just thinking the kid is supposed to understand everything you explain it. Sometimes fear is needed as a parent. Well, and we're lazy, bro. We only going to teach, you know what we do? Well, we just teach the kids that'll listen. No, go grab the one that ain't listening. He it? might need it. No, not even <laughs> ass whooping, just some hands-on attention, like, sure, and just trying right. to teach them yeah. and empower them and give them knowledge. Yeah, but... but, but you it, know what I'm saying? It, it, being a parent... And this is something, I don't have kids, right? I didn't have kids. Um, being a parent, for sure I can tell you with somebody watching it, mm. one of the key elements missing in being a parent today is mm. your kids are not scared of you. 
And sometimes to a 14, 15 year old mind, my opinion, now again, a motherfucker argue with it because they got kids and then they have the emotions of having kids. But being a child, I was a child once, there were certain things my mom wouldn't have been able to explain to me at 14 or 15. My brain wasn't developed enough and I have, you know, I was a great student and could think and read, you know, all these things. But it was certain things that a 14 year old mind couldn't digest intellectually. So she used fear to make sure this is not a decision you should make. You know what I mean? And that kept me from making that decision until my mind was smart enough to understand why I shouldn't be making it. Well, But the belief that you could explain everything to a 14-year-old right, mind, right. you know what I mean, is probably a bit disingenuous. Right. Well, let's, let's look at it here, right? Back in the day, you know, your mom or, you know what I'm saying, whoever was around you, wanted they were actually being a parent these days people want to be their kid's friend and it doesn't work like that sure. like it's cool to have a good relationship with your kid but you got to stay a parent stop trying to be their best friend all the time yeah you're trying to be their friend like you gotta you gotta be their parent because they're gonna need you to be that no it's guidance, cool to, yeah. you know what i'm saying they need that guidance man yeah. don't worry about if they like you all the time a lot of parents were, oh, I don't want to do that because I don't want them to be upset with me. Hey, they're going to be upset a lot of motherfucking yeah. times. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? If, if that stops their love for you, there's something wrong with them. Because yeah. they going to see as they grow that, you know, hey, damn, my parents kind of did this for a reason. Or the person that looked over me always showed me tough love for a reason. Because the world's hard, harder, tough. bro, than it's an ass whooping, tough. dog. Yeah, way harder. It's Come way bullets. harder than Come an ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If that ass whooping stops that kid from going and fucking off their entire life yeah. in, a, in an aspect to where this, this ass whooping is only going to hurt for a while, a little mm. bit, two minutes, guess what? You can go do something that could fucking, fucking hurt your life for a lifetime and you can't change it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if we don't start teaching them small, bro, they ain't never going to learn when something big come hit them in the face. No. That shit's going to bust them up. Yeah, tear their ass up. And it's way harder out your parents' house than it is inside. Yeah. I'm going to fuck the hardest parent house. Can't fuck with outside. Outside come with bullets. Outside yeah. come with prison. Yeah. It's just levels. And you know, I'm not saying cold clock your fucking kid. I'm not saying go and, you know what I'm saying? Because I got kids. And I'm, do I whip my kids? No, I don't, I don't have to because they listen. They know I'm not playing. Yeah, as long as that's you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's, a, there's a line that, man, my kids know, hey, I'm not playing. Yeah. You know, so I don't have to whoop their ass. But when your kid know they're going to play you and they can push you, they're going to see how far they can push your buttons. Well, there's a relationship between the father and the mother. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. My, my mom pretty much had to punch my lights out once or twice for me to get the point. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, I, I knew that nigga would kill me. Yeah. So it's like, it was going to be a certain thing I Still was not going to do around. I love that nigga, man. Yeah. I love that nigga, man. But I know he wasn't playing, and I wasn't about to be playing with him. So again, it, it's I agree. Like th That's the blessing of being you a father. You feel like it didn't help you play. Yeah. Now you Hell don't yeah. play out Hell in the world. No. I'm not playing with nobody. You know what I mean? A little bit. Because you was taught that as a grown, hey, my daddy didn't play. I, it just, I you'll inherit it naturally. <laughs> you, I really do believe glasses and we'll move on. Like, you really are a product of your environment. Hands down. You know what I'm saying? And so, your environment starts inside your house. It starts so, in your household. And don't get me wrong, I'm very much a product of, like my father, like good boy, like my mother, rest in peace to Olivia. I am a product of Moon, my older homies. Pluck, Tone, Boo, man. Shady, all my old homies, Demon, feel me, Fats, all the old homies, uh, Tone, motherfucking Blackjack. I'm a product of them too. I'm a product of Ace. I'm a product of of all the shit them niggas instilled in me and say, hey man, this is what we not doing. Yeah. And to this day, all of those lessons, just like the ones inside the house with my mom and my father, right? The ones I learned outside of the community is just as important. I'm like one of them niggas. I ain't no hyper emotional nigga. I'm not finna do all of the jaw jacking with you and all. Let's get down. Yeah. Even right now as an adult, let's get down. We gonna solve it right now. I'm yeah. not. The, I'm gonna come find you. I'm gonna terrorize you. Jail is worth it. It's a lot of things that I think in my mind that I could rationalize that a lot of men can't. Yeah. Because to teach a lesson and for it to be known, don't play with me. I'm not gonna play. I'm just not gonna play with people like that. I'm not with none of that shit. I don't got time for that. Like I'll let you say shit and. So and I don't even I choose and pick my fights well. well the day I want to fight, you ain't gonna even know it. Cause I'm gonna come up and fight. We ain't finna talk. Yeah. I ain't gonna argue. I ain't calling you the bitches. I ain't sending how these niggas talk to each other, call each other out their name. We not well, doing none of that. Well, we have to think about it, right? 
social media has created that standpoint of nigga can get online, talk shit over here, nigga can get online, talk shit over here, and you never cross paths. Yeah. I never saw that. Like, I never understood. It's, it's new to me, but I, I've grown to understand that's kind of how a lot of these niggas, man, keyboard warriors, man. Man, check this out. This is the thing I say about LA, and, and a couple niggas know this point of it. It ain't hard to find out where nobody at. Man. And niggas keep playing like everybody thinks prison is not worth. Like everybody, they think prison is the ultimate deterrent. And it's not. It's not. It depends. A lot of us think we can get away with a lot of shit. So it, it just depends, man. Like, I don't believe in that shit. I believe nigga playing with me. I'm not going to play with you. So if you playing with me, you must want to learn the hard way anyway. I don't think it's tough or nothing. I think it's just about being a man. We all got to be men. Yeah. That's the one thing being street is all about, being accountable. You say something about me, nigga, you better be ready to deal with it. Right. I ain't finna argue back and forth with you. I ain't finna do all that, man. Check this out. Where your shit at? We'll see. We gonna see. I'm gonna figure out how to get right next to you. Yeah. Feel me? And if I felt you said what you said was too far, nigga, I'm gonna, we gonna deal with it. And, and if you win, you win. But you yeah. finna, you, like my nigga Pimp said, man, you gonna smell my cologne about it for sure. Yeah. We're going to see. But see, I think for that state, like, social media, once again, has made it worse because, yeah, back in the day, nigga could get him up, dust off, you'll just hear about the fight. Now, everybody pulling out cameras. When them cameras come out, videos get posted. Now, everybody's commenting. People are saying this, saying that. Now, it's making a nigga feel like he got to go back and really do something. Yeah. But Instead shit, of just leaving that shit sometimes from where it is or go get him sure. back up. Yeah, but but at the end of the day, it's like sometimes it needs to be there. I, like I, I know this sounds crazy, but I think a lot of these niggas don't have a real understanding of life and death. You know what I mean? Like I, I think there's a space where people feel like, okay, how how close is this really going to happen to me? Huh. People talk like this shit won't happen to them. Like, this shit can't happen to them. And then they get their ass kicked, and now they got to make a decision. Where do you want to go? Hmm. Where you want to go? And then certain people, like how I grew up, like, wherever you want to go next is fine, too. I, there's nothing to run from at this point. Like, I'm, I'm okay with being accountable for anything I ever said to a nigga. Hmm. Whatever I said about him, I meant what I said. That's why when I come up to this motherfucker, the man, like, man, you by yourself? Hell yeah, I don't need nobody, nigga. It's a gun in this car. Feel me? And if it's a real problem, nigga... I'm going to squabble everybody down right about it. You know what I mean? It, it, I don't think it's tough because you don't win every squabble. Hmm. But at the end of the day, you're going to respect my name. I ain't going to be no confusing about respect for my name. You ain't going to have to ask me multiple times to fight. Unless I, unless I love you. <laughs> if I love you, I might think about it because I really don't want to you know, yeah. hurt you like that. But, yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't going to ask me no thousand times, man. Like if Whatever it is you want to do. I ain't going to run from none of this shit, man. This life, we are, for sure, nobody make it out this life alive. So... At least the one thing we gonna do is you gonna put some respect on my motherfucking name. I don't know about the rest of these niggas, but you ain't finna be playing with me like that. <laughs> Fuck all that. You, feel me? you gonna duck some of these rounds, man. We gonna get to it. Yeah, it makes sense to me, and I. It, some no, people it makes don't. Sense the to way some you people it, it down. don't. To some people it don't, and I understand that. No, you just somebody that don't play, bro. Like it's not you're not out here playing characters with niggas, like, yeah. and then. Turning it off, no. You, like you say, you feel how you feel, you know. And 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 I'm one of them type of people you can call and, rect and, and, and rectify a problem with. Like yeah. I'm intelligent enough, you can call me and explain, yeah. and I understand. But what I'm not gonna do is be out here high and drunk, making excuses. I ain't with none of that. I ain't playing. I'm not fucking around. I'm not trying to use nobody else's name to do nothing. I'm not playing none of that shit. That's why I always want to be, like I, that's why I'm trying to get too like involved with certain shit because I'm like, man, I want to be a problem solver. It's bossier to be a problem solver than that's a problem maker. That's what being a man is about, though. Than being a problem maker. Being a man is all about solving <laughs> problems. Women respect you the most when you can solve problems. Edison, Southern California Edison, Respect you when you can solve the problem of this bill. T-Mobile respects you more. When you, your credit score up when you solve the problem. You owe us, you pay us, problem solved. Here, here's more credit score. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think there's a street credit score. There's a real credit score. And, you know, again, we're in such a time, man. Where <laughs> he said there's like, a street credit score. There's a, there's a real FICO credit, score. credit score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. All, both of them is important. Both of them are very important. To some man, people, it's not. man, yes, it should 100% uh, should be, uh, for so, sure. So... For I sure. feel like it's important. I think, like you just said, being a problem solver is the true 
accountability, man, the, the essence of masculinity. So it's, it's, you're right. And I'm glad you don't participate in some of the shenanigans because <laughs> it makes, when I have to sit down, I'm like, let me sit down with somebody, right, who, who is about solving problems. Because mm -hmm. that's really what being a man is about. Mm -hmm. And respect to every nigga out there trying to solve their problems. Yeah, man, because I know it's not a, it's, life, life is not easy. I get it. It's not an easy game to play. Yeah. Life is a game, but it ain't a game. Yeah, it's not you a game. You get what I'm saying? It's here. Ain't no two man, ain't no three man, ain't no reset, ain't no playing it again. Speaking uh, for, for Glasses Malone, what, where do you feel like the state of hip hop is today, just overall? I mean, like, I think, I think street see? urban culture is- You feel like it's in an emergency state or do you feel like it's okay, everything's green lighted, it, nothing wrong? So it, it, is in a, in, it is in a very much SOS state, right? But it's not because of what we think. It is because this culture that, that the niggas in the Bronx and New York City came up with to express ourselves when you, you, know, you come from the ghetto, there was no other representation to show how we party how we do our thing, how we want to move, how we want to dance, all of our shit. They didn't have movies to explain our life. They didn't have TV shows. We didn't have representation. And if we did, it was always one-sided. You know, there was no way for the ghetto to express themselves. You know, you, you couldn't tell before. Like they, they kept a gate on us showing ourselves to the world and our circumstance. And them niggas created a, a, a hella expressive way through a party, through ideas, and you could see it. And that's what made it great. But now it's under attack, like rock and roll, where, remember, at this point, it's being fine. It, it was a business opportunity for the ghetto. It was a way for you to employ other people to express the problems artistically like put on for the world. Down. Right, but yeah. now it's like at a space, like where rock and roll, where it's like, people feel like if you emulate these people, if yeah. you talk about hurting people, if you say you're going to do this, if you act like them niggas, then you're one of them niggas. And I don't like that because it's not really true. Yeah. So now you're not getting a representation of the ghetto. You're getting a representation of niggas emulating the ghetto. And then they'll do some weird shit like paint their nails. And you'll be like, <laughs> so then you hear niggas like, me and the homies talk about, they be like, well, you know, that's what them niggas do. No, them niggas is not. Yeah. Them niggas is not paying their nails in none of these niggas community. You ain't going to no nigga community and it's a bunch of niggas with their nails painted in no ghetto in a fucking America. <laughs> not in fucking America. You ain't going to no ghetto in America and niggas is wearing dresses. The whole so block is outside. The world. He say, but over here. <laughs> I can't say nothing about the because I ain't been to the yeah. ghetto in Germany like right, that. Right, right. I ain't been to the ghetto in Japan like right, that. Right, right. But for sure I've been to Miami's ghetto. Right. Posted up. I've yeah. been to Dayton. Yeah. I've been to Detroit. Right. I've been to Cleveland. Yeah. I've been to Atlanta. And I don't give a fuck what the rapper's doing. That ain't what them street niggas doing. You right. ain't, we ain't finna fall through no block and a bunch of niggas is wearing skirts outside. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that new mirage of, you know, the dresses and the, you know, the fingernail painting and the, you know, the heavy eyeliner now or the face makeup that motherfuckers is wearing. Like, where do you feel like this shit is stemming from? Because obviously the labels are pushing it. You know I, what I'm I saying? I don't even blame labels. I don't think. Three things, shortcut. Three things. One, you're trying to tell us something, but you just don't want to say it. Two, you putting on and trying to endorse something. You know what I mean? You're trying to endorse something and, and create a separation in who you are and what everything else is. And you don't know how to do it. This is the laziest way to do it. Right? It's like, okay, I like that. Right? Three, you've been looking up to women this whole time. You want to be, you know, you love what women do. And it's not crazy, but, you know, it is a bit weird, you know. But it's those things, so... I just hate that people think that represents some ghetto. I just don't I just don't like how it's attacked the black men. I don't like how it's predominantly black men that are caught in some of these situations. I've been saying this the whole time. I've been you know hearing stories saying? about niggas telling me. I Diddy. understand if it was just versatile and it's just, you know, a couple niggas this week, a yeah. couple white boys no. this week, a couple no. Asians next week. No, it's having a pattern of niggas. For sure. And my problem in hip-hop, everybody knows hip-hop represents the ghetto first. 
So then they'll look at some nigga like, well, that's what them niggas doing. It's a community of niggas wearing purses. No, it's no ghetto in America where everybody wearing a purse. That ain't no trend in no ghetto. I'd have been to all of them motherfucking ghettos. Look, that's that one, and that's the thing. Hip hop has always been about us. Now it's going into a space that it's about me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It used to be about us. Ice Cube was a great representation of us. Yeah. Jeezy was a great representation of us. You know, you were supposed to represent us. Now you get artists representing me, and they like, you know, and then they got some money. So a bunch of other poor niggas like, well, you know, that's the homie. No, you just poor. You think this nigga going to help you, but he not. Yeah. You're not going to get shit. If a nigga wearing a dress for sure, he ain't going to help you. You feel like, uh, seems like, you know, the women are taking over the industry yeah. right about now, you know? And shout out to all them, you know, getting they, getting they shine. I love it too. But it's just like, niggas, I feel like that's happening because niggas ain't stepping up to the plate like that no more. The music's getting sloppy. Niggas is just putting out whatever. Well, it could be because they trying to be a bitch and who could be a bitch better than a bitch? You know what I'm saying? They, if, they, if, if wearing dresses and purses and fingernail polish is cool, shit, it makes sense for women to be leading the show. Oh, y'all niggas trying to be us, so I appreciate What's women. What's going on, bro? <laughs> I mean, think about it. You, these niggas been wearing, they been setting the stage for the women to come in and, and make their move over street urban culture. You been wearing dresses, skirts, yeah. purses. Niggas got weaves. Like, I'm watching niggas. It ain't no fanny pack shit no more. Niggas is walking around with full-blown bags, bro. I, I see. I with they shit. shit in them. I seen that shit with Fabulous uh, the other, yesterday. He was like, yeah, Come you know, on, y'all talk about this person. He was like, it's a cross-body bag. And it's like, in, that's a cross-body bag in, like, Europe. Yeah. You know, culturally, we <laughs> it's just a little different. <laughs> You know what I mean? But again, Fab is, is, a, is a fashion. F I don't fuck with the anklet. He is. He... I don't fuck with the anklet. That's the thing. I'll I'm, I'm, be honest. I'll be like, because you and that fucking anklet is crazy. Yeah, Take that fucking that, anklet off. That's. I do not. Bro, why are your yeah. ankles glistening? Yeah, that. <laughs> I'm not but this is what happens hey, when you're too I good as a lie. rapper, bro. Yeah, like, look. The nigga's so I, nice, he just doing shit. Because I love fashion, bro. Like, I, lo I love it. And I love fucking with, you know, the different fashion senses. Yeah, but some of it is a little overboard. Like, a nigga walking around like Fab, you got to. Bro, for us, you take that shit off, my nigga. <laughs> take that off, bro. I'm, I'm you, not, don't, you don't need that. Or wear it in Europe. Huh? Wear it in Europe. Yeah. We don't need that. Like, too many of us in the ghetto look up to Fab. Yeah. You know, but Fab is Fab is one of them niggas that's so good as EMC. Like, yeah, I could just do anything. Hold up, bro. Just I, I think I think Fab, I'm not a fashionable person. I, I think of fashion as an expression of who you are. Yeah. Right? So if you're a colorful person, wear your colors. I'm yeah. Yeah. I'm motherfucking I'm I'm got rich and hard. So I'm nigga. Gonna, got yeah. the Davis on Now I'm right? comfortable. <laughs> I ain't fucking with y'all no more in these clothes. I'm gonna let you, you're gonna see me a mile away and be like, oh, I know what time he on. Yeah. And to me, that's what fashion well, is. Well, why not? Glasses, you know, you're very versatile, but like with your music and who you've worked with, sure. you've been able to step out the box. You can't, you know what I'm saying? Try something different than I the Ben Davis just and, don't and the really... Cortezes. You came in with the Cortezes yeah, on, but, man. But, so my thing with fashion, so shout out to my nigga T Real, because we always talk about this. Shout out to T Real. But, but it's like, nigga, I don't fuck with that shit. Yeah. I can't even look at white people's clothes. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, white people make this. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. But I'm saying Italian cut, I'm too African for European yeah. cut. I'm way too African, man, for European <laughs> cut. It's just, no, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I'm not mad at it. I'm not, I'm not really good at looking at through designers and picking yeah. through. That just ain't my thing. But I don't knock no nothing, nigga. Man, if you a fresh nigga, yeah. man, do your fresh thing. I just want you to be masculine with it. Like, you ain't got to steal the lady shit. Come on, some designer glasses. I've been man. The, the frames I be wearing. You gotta come out with some designer. If you like, see the frames I be wearing, they'll my go friends, crazy, bro. If, but designer, they can't be like too European. And y'all, but you don't want to be no lokes neither. No, like, no, no. Just but but be, I, I ain't been wearing. I ain't been wearing dark shades. Like I want niggas to see because I'm serious. Yeah. So if you notice a lot of glasses <laughs> I be wearing clear. I'm yeah. not these niggas. I ain't hide my yeah. eyes, bitch. You need to see. I'm serious. Yeah. I believe this shit. Yeah. I ain't trolling you. I believe this yeah, shit. This, I ain't, I'm finna hey, for fight, real. kill, shoot, and die over this shit. So I wear a lot. Even the friends I be wearing be four, five hundred dollars. You know what I mean? As far as yeah. something that fit me. Yeah. And the, and the truth is, man, this shit fit me. I'm that type of LA nigga, yeah. man. I'm yeah. I'm the classic, quintessential Los Angeles nigga that's so. <laughs> If, if you know what I'm saying, like, yeah. so I, I feel like it's important to represent it that way, and that's what, like I said, 
people, <laughs> me and the Giants, me and the LA Giants, shout out to the Giants, they all over to the cancel these nuts album. But it's like, um, we them quintessential Los Angeles niggas. We ain't cutting this shit with nothing. This is not cut. This 117% pure Los Angeles nigga down to the core. Yeah. And I walk in every room around the country. I'm proud that we from Southern California. I wear this California shit better than everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there were times that I thought I can be into fashion, but man, I don't got enough. I don't know how to do it. It's not my fault. I fuck with cars like we talked about. Yeah. I know where I'm, I'm going to do my thing at. Yeah. I'm going to let y'all have the fashion. Y'all yeah. niggas wear all of the European shit. I'm going to stick with this. Let me be the Los Angeles nigga I was born to be every day. Yeah. Simple. Speaking of who's going to be who, I got to know what you think about the Diddy situation. That's my What's point. Like, with all that? Because I heard you speak up on it earlier. You was yeah. like, you know, no matter what, like with, uh, I believe, the May situation, you was like, you know, the I bad don't mouth. I get it. Yeah. I, like, and, and one of these days, I'm going I'm to get a chance to talk to Mace, God willing, you know what I mean, and really get it. Because he yeah. going to have to tell me some crazy shit. Yeah. Like, nigga, like this nigga raped my mama or something. Like, I don't know how a nigga made you a millionaire and you got a bad thing to say about cuz. I'm going to fuck what else you didn't get. Yeah. Nigga, change your poor ass life is different. I mean, so yeah. my thing with Diddy is there's a truth somewhere in the middle, right? Do I think Diddy is raping bitches? Fuck no. Puff ain't raping. It's not impossible, but yeah. Puff ain't raping no bitch, man. Every, every bitch in the world trying to get Puff some pussy. Trying to get Puff some pussy. Yeah, he ain't raping no bitch. Um, do I think Cassie, I mean, I, I, I'm sure it's some level of truth to it, but mm. where is it at in the middle? I don't know. But it's really none of our business because it's in their bedroom, mm. right? I, I think Puff is in a situation to where... Either he didn't became entirely too powerful, you know what I'm saying? And now it's like- Billion dollar man. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's Which all that man. shit is hella fluff, because ain't like Puff got billions of dollars. He can't go sell- Puff couldn't sell everything he got and have a billion fucking dollars. Yeah. But again, the way these white people value themselves and create this false sense of value that we now we call a nigga shit that we don't even understand what it means. Yeah. But in Puff's situation, I think is he didn't got entirely too powerful and too mildly, and now people are making attacks. Those same attacks would have been suppressed. <laughs> Those same attacks would have been suppressed by the people that's backing him up and all that. Now you just, he, he didn't live long enough. He, he didn't live that the hero, he didn't live as the hero long enough to see himself become the villain. And now we watching it, like Puff. Puff choking niggas out, punching on niggas and all that, and running around, and now they say he raping bitches and robbing niggas. Who is this Puff? <laughs> this ain't the Puff that I remember when I was younger. Yeah. This nigga done turned into Pops. He done turned into Shug. Yeah. Feel me? So it's 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 one of them things, man, where it's like I, I hate to see it happening to him like that. And I hate that the narrative amongst other black folks is like, okay, if he did it, let's let's like any other person, let's let's yeah. see him prove it in court before we just jump off the rail. And I jump. feel like it all started with for him with the Keefy D situation. Like when all that popped off and they were talking about all oh, Diddy, you know, just his name just even coming up in the conversation. It was like the media or just the people at hand did not want to let his name go. Mm -hmm. They wanted to keep him in the melting pot. You know what I'm saying? It sounded too good. It made too much noise. Yeah. You know, so like once that happened, that kind of fizzles out. Now here comes all the allegations of all these chicks. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, they're kind of like- money, because none of it is criminal. And this is my problem. Yeah. Like, like this, you know who went through this? Cat Williams went through this. Hmm. Um, real story, I never told the story. So right when I went through this kind of, like I was going through this cocoon, I was in this cocoon, like, you know, 2011 to 2019, where like I was transforming myself from just the street nigga, the crib, charm dealer, into a real rapper to a real hip hop artist. And it wasn't a lot of things I could do from that time to make money. I couldn't really go on tours. Like I tried to put out some music, but I, I wasn't focused enough because it's like trying to have a job and be in medical school. So I was learning all this shit from 11 to 19. Yeah. And um, I say that to say that um, more than anything, dog. Puff ass, even, even back to the Keefe D thing, even back to that point, right? I agree, they are holding him to the, to the, to the fire, right? They hold him to the motherfucking fire. Mm. But uh, it's just all of this shit at once. All of this shit at once. Mm. All of this shit of, of, of 
He supposed to did this. He did this. He did that. He did this. He did that. He did this. He did that. But there's no criminal charges. Back to my point. So as I'm going through this metamorphosis, Cat Williams comes to my studio. He wants me to do some music for him. Right? He like, uh, man, glasses, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is the time when everybody's saying Cat Williams is on drugs. They're like, oh, man, Cat Williams I on drugs. I remember that time. Cat yeah. Williams on drugs. So when he reaches out, he's like, man, I want to do a song with glasses. It's like, yeah, it's Cat Williams, girl. Like, pull up. So he comes. He got like two, three girls with him. They set up a bar. I was building two studios upstairs at my studio. They set up a bar in one of the open setups. It wasn't finished. He sets up a bar with liquor. He got some girls setting it up. So he's in there talking to me, and I'm listening to this nigga talk to me. I done sold a lot of rocks. Man, this nigga ain't on drugs. I ain't sold a lot of shine. This nigga not on drugs. He talking to me. I'm like, this nigga too conscious. Like, he too aware of everything. And he telling me what he's going through. He like, yeah, G, man, them motherfuckers ain't never brought me to no court. I never went to no trial. I never, nothing. He said, they just arrested me. And he was just telling me how... Like, he turned down an opportunity somebody was trying to present to him that he didn't really respect. He like, I didn't did too much work. And he was like, nah, man, like, this is what this shit is all about. Like, nigga, I'm going to do what I want to do, and they can't tear me down. Mm. And that shit usually breaks you. But that nigga was such a cold nigga, it didn't break Cat Williams. And I remember just doing the songs with him and just really just being in awe because, like, how he was moving. And I'm like, man, this nigga's a nigga. He a boy. Like, this nigga ain't no motherfucking sucker. He ain't on no dope. But I remember the public thing at that time. And I remember it happened to Dave Chappelle. And then I remember it happened. I'm left. watching it. I'm he watching said, it happen fuck everybody. Puff. Yeah. So, again, there is something going on when these people are entirely too powerful and have too much control of their career and mm. their path that allows them to become a villain. And it's so easy for us to take it you know, what these people are saying about the people that we love. Even now, like, you got all these random people. Like, I'm, I'm so upset at all these people, like, finding a moment to kick this man when he down. You know I mean, I don't they give a fuck. They wait for it. They wait for it, man. You know what I mean? Every time. Like, I was saying that shit about Cat Williams, shit about Dave Chappelle. And I'm like, then I'm watching it happen to Puff. Now, again, if Puff is guilty or whatever, man, let's let this man face his accuser and go through the criminal process like everybody else. But this nigga ain't got one criminal charge through this whole shit. He ain't that powerful because this shit wouldn't be happening if he had that much power. But it got to be a reason everybody coming after the money. It happened to Michael Jackson. It got to be a reason when people only coming after the money. Ain't no criminal charge. You mean he's this, he's this menace and not one criminal charge? I don't know if this makes sense, but I try to analyze it as such of... If you really look at it, right, once you get, like, a certain amount of bread, it's like you're not allowed to own you anymore. Yeah. You're not in control yeah. of how you move. Fact. You're not in control of what you're allowed to say. Like, when you say some shit that's outlandish, can cancel you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It can fuck you over. Like, you have to move to a certain light to continue to still have your wealthiness. So some people that try to break away from that, like the... Puffs or the Bill Cosby's, yeah. you know, people like that. They're trying to get with Dave Chappelle. These niggas have made millions upon millions on their own. So they don't want no type of, you ain't going to control me. Look at Dave Chappelle. Where that nigga run to Africa? Mm -hmm. That nigga was gone. But like, Said, fuck this but, shit. But a nigga like Martin Lawrence, it broke. And now we watching him put himself back together. Remember, he went through all that shit where they found him out there on drugs, tripping, running around crazy. Or at least that's what they say. I ain't never confirmed it with cuz or talked to him. But I'm yeah. saying they break you. I mean, especially if they paying you to make you. They like, hold up, we got you. We own you. We control you. Don't speak against our program. So somewhere with Puff, man, it's, it's somebody's hella mad and no longer shading him from a lot of the things that happen to rich black men. I ain't, my whole life they've been telling me all these rich, wealthy black men in hip-hop is gay. I ain't never heard them say that about white people that's wealthy. White people in music, that's wealthy. I ain't never heard them say that about white people in acting, Hollywood, that's healthy. I ain't never heard them say none of that. But all these wealthy black men in hip-hop, is supposed again, some of this shit is just bullshit, and I don't fuck with it. You know what I mean? I ain't subscribing. Now, what, what's happening with Puff Cuz is somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Do I think he raping other bitches? I don't believe that. Do I think he, um, he's, a, he's a shrewd businessman? Yeah, but he's supposed to be. He the one that paid his youth and everything to learn what he knows to make all these hit records. You know, all that, all these niggas, bullshit, because you niggas ain't made a half a record without cuz. 
You ain't made a hat. The only niggas to me, the locks, they could say something because they went on and did some shit. Rest of you niggas, cuz I ain't made a half a fucking hit record without cuz. Why y'all can't make no hit record? None of these niggas made half a hit records without cuz. If you niggas got it, cuz, then what are we talking about? Mm. But again, he paid for it. He learned. He loved his shit. And he paid for it. You know what I mean? With his, he, he, so it's, it's right that he does the business he does. Because he is the value to himself. Right. You know what I mean? The rest of these niggas, they benefit off of his talents. And then they have talent. But let's see you do the business with your talent. So how I feel about Puff is I think Puff is really under attack. And I feel like instead of people who coming out that he did give them an opportunity and change their life, it's easier to just kick cuz when he down. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just easier to kick cuz when he down. Yeah. And I got a lot of partners that fuck with cuz. Yeah. If he fucking niggas and all that, ain't none of these niggas, half of these niggas. Sl- Nip fuck with cuz. Nip ain't never thought that. Nick, yeah. when we talked about Cuz, he ain't never thought that. Problem fuck with Cuz, he never thought that. I mean, he did have a problem with, with Fab and saying, man, why don't you never party with me, man? Why don't you never invite me to your birthday? Oh, Puff say, <laughs> Puff say all kind of, a lot of these niggas say some filthy he shit. He said, I like it like that, daddy. Yeah. Pause. He, he be on one, bro. Yeah. I don't know if he do it because he know people say it, so he just kind of embrace it. I, I it. think some of these niggas get entirely too comfortable with their sexuality and allow things to be funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I remember seeing... some I, shit, bro. I remember yeah. Charlotte Mag was talking to the nigga... Uh, Talk about, yeah, if this nigga get, get off, I'm, I'll suck his dick. That's not even something to be, you know what I mean? But again, that's also <laughs> rooted in a lot of masculinity while we don't play with sexuality. Yeah. But, but I do think it, it's a freeing element once you get money yeah. to express humor at higher levels for those type of people. So, yeah, I do think Puff fuck with niggas. He's a fucking, he's a dick like that. So I'd imagine him being a funny nigga. But you ain't going to tell me he fucking all the bitches and all the niggas. Yeah, because I feel like this, right? I was like, damn. I'm like, I'm just waiting for the niggas to come out the mix. Is there gonna be some people that could some men that come out? Which I don't think th- I don't think there is. Like I yeah, fuck man. with Puff. Puff is, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, he's iconic, bro, for what he's done, not yeah. only for himself, but like you said, for Other others. Other black bro. men. Cause he didn't change, together. like you say, he didn't change yeah, niggas' lives. lives. So no matter what the fuck he did, you everybody else can say something. You really can't say shit, cause he changed your life, bro. You gotta kind of just roll with the punches. I mean, you really supposed to come out and be standing up for him. But again, we in that time now. If you do, you get thrown in the mix with the wood, right in the mix of the wood, in the lion's den, bro. But if you there. Like this right now, we doing this right now, right? So let me yeah. glass this. Man, that nigga self-made. So unless you, like, why, why is all these other niggas under attack to where if you stand up for another brother, that changed your life? Like, there was a time when niggas was talking shit about Birdman. Nigga can't tell me nothing about Birdman, bro. And I'm not saying it because a nigga changed my life, because I ain't never saw it. And I don't give a fuck what they saying about Birdman business. I can't say it. So when they was talking all that shit about Birdman business, I can't. I stood up on every platform. I can't vouch for that. Yeah. Cuz paid me and extra paid me, and I ain't no threat to this nigga. Like, this nigga got millions of dollars. Right. That nigga millions taught me the business. Millions. Yeah. That nigga taught me the business, never denied me to know the business. It was always so you uh, had a relationship uh, to this him. man. I love that nigga, man. That nigga just never meet? held no business. Huh? How y'all meet? Mac Ten. Yeah, Mac Ten. Another nigga taught me the business. I don't give a fuck what niggas is saying. Yeah. But again, you can see that these niggas ain't men because they don't stand up for other men that changed their life. How you not gonna be accountable? Like Puff is up to Puff to deal with Puff shit. But all you niggas that's hopping on a bandwagon to get an interview to talk bad about cuz you niggas is bitches. Straight up, that is some girl shit. That's some woman shit, you know, bullshit. I ain't fucking with that. Let yeah. that man deal with his cases the way everybody else get to deal with their cases. Yeah. Why the fuck is I, I got to jump in? This ain't got nothing to do with me. And if anything, if he changed, changed my life, I for sure would be standing up for cuz. Cuz that's, to me, that's a nigga that's been waiting to say something. Yeah. That's a nigga that's been waiting on his, that's some snake shit. That's waiting on your opportunity to strike. Behind his back instead of to his face. Why don't you just walk in there and just go strike him if you've yeah. been at a problem Puff with him? Puff ain't that hard to get to where you can't squabble Puff. I heard. I think he'll get out. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I heard him talking to the little actor on the corner. I couldn't even believe it because that's what made me start thinking this shit might be true. I'm like, I saw our cousin was talking to the actor on that corner when he was dressed like the Joker. Hey, now they, you know they told him he can't do that no more? Man, they, had to, they Puff, banned him as being that first following. First Puff would have to squabble me cut right there. Yeah. You ain't finna be saying all that shit to me. You can squabble with me, nigga, right now. 
fuck is wrong? <laughs> you never thought you would ever squabble well, with the Pump, Joker man, in your what? life, huh? Shit, Pump had to, <laughs> had to, Pump had to squabble with me. Yeah. Had to squabble with me. <laughs> now you talk to that man on that corner, man, I had to squabble Puff, cause you Puff, cause we had to line that shit up, bro. I'm not. Yeah, you can't do all that to me, bro. We gonna see. Yeah. But so now, nah, the thing is, I think somewhere it's true in the middle. Yeah. I mean, I think Puff probably a little wild boy, but I don't think it's, he's nowhere near as bad as everybody trying to act like he is. I think yeah. everybody just ungrateful and they forgot that they was begging for the opportunity to be around this nigga because of what he knew. And then now that he won't let him be around him no more, it's like I'm mad. Cassie's right. situation is different. They should have. Yeah, they should. Yeah. Person. That's, that's love. I, I won't you. talk to none of my. <laughs> I ain't getting no homeboy shit or no yeah. brother shit about them in love. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know what kind of shit y'all was doing. You be fucking with the old schools, huh? Yeah, that's it. Story of my life. What you got? Uh, I got some new shit. I really ain't been trying to talk Car about it. Car-wise, you know what I'm saying? What you got? Like, yeah, we got to talk about the motor. Because I, I know how I be, because if a nigga yeah, racing, yeah. you no, ain't no. about to. Uh, <sighs> I got a few different things. I got a Malibu wagon. I got my mirror you know that I love. working on that one. 58 wagon, uh, Cabriolet, 79 Cabriolet, the Cadillac, low rider that we working on. Yeah. Uh, you taking it off frame? 70, 67 and probably convertible. Yeah, everything. That, them shits be in line. Yeah. Because I ain't rich enough to be doing all this shit at once. I mean, shit. <laughs> if you think about it, no, true. But, you know, fuck around. You can get the frame powder coated, probably. You know what I'm saying? Take the motherfucker off. Get the motherfucker powder coated. This is how I look, right? I, I I feel like right now I've been, my whole shit is just cancel these nuts. Yeah. You know what I mean? The album. So I'm doing all my promo run. This shit, one person. Yeah. Like all this shit, if you see me on the Breakfast Club, that's because somebody from the Breakfast Club, uh, 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 C and Envy fuck with me. The right. Taylor, the producer, fuck with me. Somebody yeah. fuck with me. If, if I do math, it's because I fuck with math. If, this is just maintaining relationships. I'm in the Bay, it's because I'm one of those guys and niggas show me love. So yeah. you got to fly yourself, get you there. So I'm paying all this money yeah. and I'm selling all of my albums at the Crip Store, at my yeah. website. Well, let's w- go w- racing, w- nigga. We can always make some Crip extra bread, bro. Com. I know, but I... So during They'll this time... they bite the bait, nigga. No, but during this time, I haven't had it. So I only got a chance to finish my motor. Shout out to Dustin. Yeah. Dustin is dope. Uh, 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 hold up. Dustin Lee. You know, my trans is crazy. Shout out to Mike Transmission. Yeah. Um, I got my drive train together, but my shit ain't together. But also, I ain't, I can't hustle my race car in that regard. Yeah. Like, I love it too much. You know what I mean? That, now, that's not going to race for that money. Car. There's nothing on that car that's going to break that you can fix for $100. Yeah, no. Nothing. No, it's over. Nothing. No, no. There's nothing on that car, bro. It's like when we was talking about the heads, like, and all of that, right? Um, I, I really do shit in a... Nigga, the nigga who designed the heads did mm. my port work. Mm. Shout out to Tony Mamo. Like, so it, it's not like an outskirt nigga that I took and got my heads fully ported and polished and all yeah. that. No. This nigga designed the heads yeah. for Airflow Research. Well, you know, John Keller Sr., shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? John, you know what I'm saying? Keller shout Racing. Out, yeah. They do roundabouts, so they do like NASCAR roundabout. That's the shit. His yeah. son, like and those been, heads was the shit for a long time, and niggas we couldn't even fuck. They with got like he was like, man, I remember when they first came out, he, they dropped him a set of eight, like eight sets of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ended up getting shit. I've had two of those eight sets. Nice. And his daddy, you know what I'm saying? He's been in the game for 20 years. They didn't won NASCAR cups, all that shit. I, I, we had a white boy like this name was Joe Sherman from Sherman Racing. Yeah. And uh, rest in peace to Joe. Shout out yeah. to his kids. Shout mm-hmm. out to Larry Kennedy, all the good folks over there on that racing scene. But yeah. he was like that with Airflow, too. He had been porting heads. Uh, my guy pops got me in the racing. Rob, my dad. Yeah. Shout out to my dad. Yeah. You know, they got me in the racing. And. My God pops helped me understand how important heads were. So yeah, we, head work we, is important, bro. It's everything. It's heads everything. and cam is all your horsepower. It's everything. Heads and cam. So Joe Sherman, shout out to Sherman Racing and everything they were doing. Mm. But they were on heads and, you know, porting and polishing cylinder heads and race cars early. Yeah. So just like, just shout out shout out to Keller and all of them. They yeah. was all in that early set. It was all in that early set, Porting man. and dynoing and getting power. So I fuck with it for a real passion, just like music, though. Yeah. Where I'm at with hip-hop, it can't be about money. Yeah. You have to do business. This is why I sell all of my music at www.thecripstore.com. That don't mean that Spotify ain't, you know what I'm saying? That don't mean Spotify ain't streaming my shit. That don't mean Apple don't got my shit. Shout out to Ebro and all the people that push my shit up at Apple and love I get. But it's up to me to sell my shit and make it work. Right. So right now, all my money been in marketing, 
my 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 brand, my music, reintroducing myself to the landscape, introducing the Giants, the LA Giants. Shout out to the homies, yeah. Joey and Deuce. It's all been about introducing that shit to the landscape. And this shit is expensive. This ain't no punk. No, you flying no. New York, you fucking with this shit. No, it's not. To the and bay. like, you know, fucking with them cars and your cars, those aren't cheap. Yeah. You and know so, what I'm saying? To put them together. That's so not a cheap hobby, bro. My drivetrain, my, yeah, it's not you know, my converter hobby. done, my trans done, my engine done. Yeah. Now I got to start fucking with the car. Yeah. You know, making sure the car hook up no matter where it's at. But it, it's they look at the me. car and don't know that car is sixty, seventy thousand dollar car exactly. sitting there. It's Old school, it costs yeah, money cost nigga, to, to keep them together. I feel you. It's an expensive yeah. hobby, especially when a nigga has something that costs some expensive living and having to make a move. Nigga got to take a. a it's pick. like you investing in your business. The motherfucker's gonna sit on the back burner for a little for bit. For right now, so yeah. like right They'll now, be there. yeah, right now it's all about this shit. You know what I mean? But me, like I told you, my nigga Gene, shout out to Gene Sanders, all the homies that's with yeah, us. Yeah, shout out to Gene, you know man, I mean? my but nigga. We working behind the scenes to make sure right around 2025, yeah. like all this car shit is done. Yeah. Ain't nobody fucking around. We finna take all of that too, but it's just right now I got to do the business, this record business, this music business. I got to sell my music. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got to sell www.thecripstore.com. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Spotify, girl, Apple, all that. You feel me? We on. Like, that's what it is. Yeah, no, that's live, man. You know, is that, what's some of the features that's on that album that you did? Uh, Really just the LA Giants. Yeah. Just the homies, bro. Like, I Don't got free on them. there. Cocaine. Yeah. Jelly Roll does a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh, there we my go. My little sister, Nikina. Kimber Nicole is a dope female artist. EP produced the whole album. EP yeah. from Watts with my Jordan Dams. Um, Alicia, she sang on us. She been on my ass about it because she felt like she ain't getting enough credit. Yeah. But um, it's really just a brainstorm of just L.A. resurfacing, like our attitude. Yeah. I feel like you see a lot of other things, but you don't really see our attitude in a lot of ways. Yeah. And our attitude towards a lot of shit going on. And that's what we focused on. So you want to take that back? You want to get back into the reins of that? I mean, I think it's just where we at. I, L.A. ain't changed enough for me to believe nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't changed enough girl, for me to believe nothing else. Yeah. I, when I'm hanging out, because it ain't like niggas is hanging out wearing skirts or purses. Right. Niggas still <laughs> just tripping. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can't, I can't, I can't, um, I got to let them know we still where we at with it. Any shows, anything coming up soon? We doing our own shit. We producing a concert like a house party. Yeah. Um, I really ain't looking to do shows for other people. I'm yeah. more residency. Even just for yourself, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. We finna do some we finna do some dope shit. Yeah. Uh, we doing a residency, like I said, it's a it's a concert produced like a house party. We gonna That's give gonna niggas the real treatment. You know what I mean? That's gonna be live, right? You don't there. come and really get to come to LA for real. Give it an old school feel. Yeah, you ain't finna I ain't you don't get to drink with niggas drinking, you don't get to really hang the way niggas hang. Yeah. And that's all we focused on, man, making it a cultural experience for everybody, all this shit. Yeah. Straight up. Who you feel like right now, like up and coming, like top two up and coming right now in LA, you say like, man, they got it. They just gotta kinda stay in the mix. I love what Zoe's doing. Hmm. And I like what Famous Uno is doing. Um, I like how Zoe rap. I just yeah. it's like an energy. He just probably need to be produced, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think he got a natural knack for it, producing. And then there's, it, it's so, music is not even like that no more, where it's like these niggas, like, right? It's nigga who got the shit at the time when they got the shit. You know what I mean? It, it ain't, right. I don't know if it's gonna go back to that space no more, where it's like one nigga is just dominating. You know what I mean? I love what Perico do, I love what Conrad do, I love what different niggas do when they doing it. Whoever got the shit. Fig Newton, I love when niggas is doing their thing. I love that R&B shit that Blast got going on and my little nephew, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like different niggas, they got different things, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's the landscape is so diverse because it's, they have been learning about LA niggas for 40 years. You know what I mean? So yeah. now we just showing off the diversity of it all. Yeah. I appreciate that. Is there anything uh, you want to tell your fans or the viewers? You know what I'm saying? Anything you want to, you want to, any last finishing touches you want to leave them with? Man, they already know, man. I'm finna just, it's finna just be bad. (laughs) 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 For niggas, girl. Hey, man, I appreciate you for sliding through. We talked, remember, we talked about this last week at the other spot, right? So, 
yeah. we was gonna do this, and the homie was trying to link us and shit. Yeah, so, yeah. and we finally, an hey, we finally, man, it was an honor to sit down with you because, like I said, I've known about you since 2008. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. since you've been in the game. So, like, and you came out swinging then. So, it was an honor to sit down with you, you know, a real batter upper, yeah. you know, and just and you once know, we jump talk off, we're gonna talk about some of this, we're gonna talk about some of this racing shit. But, yeah, yeah. yeah we, for eventually, sure. we eventually gotta have a real conversation. Yeah. I don't know how we do it because I don't think. No Man. jumper audience really want to hear about how far we're going to go into this car shit. Yeah, I, but we, I just we'll wanted to out touch the, right. the surfaces of it, yeah. though. You know, I, you know what I'm going to get with High Rod? I'm going to get with High Rod. Yeah. Because they need some urban content. Yeah. Like High Rod Magazine and all these. Yeah. Y'all yeah. need some urban content, and y'all need to hear Race It from our perspective. Race It we from got our perspective. Real I, I got some, man, I got some real stories, yeah, man. man. Real yeah. footage of man, yeah. cars really running. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Head. Putting race motors in pretty cars. I, I like that though. The circuit track people giving you your head. That's yeah. that's slick. Yeah. yeah, that's important. Man was whooping shit with a little. They don't even know what's wrong. Series, but it's all good. Hey. The Sharp Tank, no jumper. Yeah. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Hey, Donnie, shoot us out the motherfucking gym. <laughs>